All right. Hey, everybody. We are live. Thank you so much for sticking around. We just had minor technical difficulties, which is the theme of the day with Skype. <laughs> so, uh-oh. Mike, can you see me? Are you, are you there? I, yes, I'm here. Your video looks frozen, but that's okay. Uh, you look like you're mad. <laughs> the, the way I, 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 I'm so mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Uh, so what, what are you speaking to us today about, Mike? So today we're going to talk about uh, using SQL in containers to do some development work and just some random tasks that you have to do without having to install it on your development machine. Awesome. Let's get started. Okay. Go ahead and share <clears throat> your screen whenever you're ready. Uh, let's see. Well, see, it's not showing. It should be showing. Oh, okay. We'll switch over there. We'll do that. Hopefully so. Hey, there it is. I see it now. There it is. I've got as much hair as the .NET bot. Perfect. But my beard's not nearly as pretty <laughs> as Mark Miller's. Was that, that amazing or what? That he is, is so good at that. Yes, he is. <clears throat> so, so yeah, we're going to talk about uh, some fun stuff or, or somewhat. I think it's fun. My threshold for fun is pretty low. I'm uh, Michael Jolly, and I'm happy to talk about using containerized SQL Server as part of our development lifecycle. So one of the greatest things about doing this <clears throat> is uh, this is all our Twitch family. I see so many Twitch friends in the chat. Uh, it's just, this is fam, right? This is family time. So let's talk about it. Let me tell you a little bit about my background. Uh, I've been a software developer uh, and architect for nearly 20 years, primarily focused on mobile and web. Uh, uh, I'm a live coding on Twitch three days a week as part of the live coders team with C Sharp Fritz, Jeff Fritz. And uh, I'm an Auth0 ambassador. I love talking about security. So feel free to hit me up on that because, you know, that's fun stuff. Uh, and when I'm not running code, I'm probably spending time with my family, playing music, or trying to exit them. It's a losing battle. Uh, so <clears throat> one of the best parts of my job uh, is to find new technologies and tools and processes that help people in their developer experience. And I'm excited to sh share one of those with you today. I've been using it for probably four or five months and it is legit. It is too legit, in fact, to quit. Yeah, I said that. Uh, so Docker, we don't need no stinking Dockers. Well, what is Docker? Let's just go really quick, high level overview. You will not know all the intricacies of Docker after this, but what is it? Uh, the easiest, and some would say too simplistic way to describe Docker, is to compare them to virtual machines. <clears throat> they are not virtual machines, uh, but both provide similar resource isolation and allocation benefits, but they're fundamentally different. Because at, at, at its core, doc, uh, VM uh, virtualizes hardware, whereas um, Containers virtualize the OS, and really that's kind of a heavy-handed way to describe it. Uh, containers would probably be better described as a system service. Uh, they're isolated and don't really know about anything you don't specifically tell them about. Uh, for instance, uh, they don't need to know about networking. They don't need to know about peripherals. Uh, was that a word? Well, it is now. And so on. You know, it doesn't have to know anything about that. It's just a service that's running. Uh, if you need it to have network access, you tell it about network access. If it needs to know file access, you tell it about file access. Uh, but another another reason we want to use Docker is because, man, the containers, the images are so much smaller compared to like a VM uh, image or, or, or just a, even a whole install of SQL Server. The images can be in the tens to hundreds of megabytes versus gigs of uh, just the install for SQL, right? <clears throat> Nobody puts SQL in a container. What are the benefits to putting it in a container? Why would I want to do that? Well, I'll tell you why. I'm glad you asked. First is the reduced footprint on your local machine. So if you've ever installed SQL, you know that it's a big install. And then I've got to deal with updates periodically. Uh, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to fight that battle, right? I mean, I only need SQL Server when I'm developing or maybe having to do some kind of data manipulation for a client, something like that. You know, I, I don't I don't necessarily need all that stuff all the time. Second, 
one of the benefits is we get cross-platform support. So all of our friends on Linux and our friends on Macs who are developing can all kind of share in the joy that is developing against SQL without having to, you know, install that there, right? Uh, and the third one is um, one less, although massive, attack vector on our machine. If you've ever installed SQL Server and watched your error logs, you know firsthand that SQL Server is one of the most attacked pieces of software in the world. It's insane. And I don't want to be exposed to that. I don't even want to have to think about that, right? So by running SQL Server in a container, you get all the benefits of a full install while being able to throw it away when you're done working with no impact to your local development machine. That's right. Hashtag not on my machine. <clears throat> so let's, let's, well, before we get into the demos, I, I do want to say you probably shouldn't be running SQL Server in a container in a production environment. Uh, while only a Sith deals in absolutes, I will say it would be a very unique use case that you would need to run SQL in a container in a production environment. Uh, but we can use it for day-to-day -day tasks and to improve our development workflow. So let's see it in action. Are you ready? First, I'm just going to show you some uh, some code we're going to run in the terminal, uh, spinning it up in a container. Basically, we're going to run a command. We have to have Docker installed, right? That makes sense. And we're going to run that command up there that's kind of in the teal. And basically, to break down what each of those points are, you're setting two environment variables. One is the SA accounts password. Shout out .NET Comp. Uh, we're also going to accept the EULA. You just got to do it. Name is optional, but recommended because it names that container that's running. And then otherwise, you're going to have to reference that container by like the ID, which is god awful. Don't do it. You'll love me if you if you'll you'll love me the minute you do it. And remember, hey, Mike said don't do that. And then finally, the dash D, we're telling uh, we're telling Docker what image we want to use to build that container. So in this case, we're using uh, MS SQL Server 2017, and it's actually running in. Uh, uh, Linux. So that's pretty cool. Uh, wait, let's do that. Matter of fact, let's go back and let me escape out of that. And why don't we do some magic in PowerShell? So let me go. We're, we're going to run that command. Trust me, we're going to run it. It's going to be so cool. Okay. So there's that command. I'm just copying and pasting it in. Hit go, go gadget run, and there it is. So, so it gives me this gobbledygook, and that's that image you never want to see, that, that, that string. So uh, with that running, we should see some Docker containers running. So if I, well, let me not use my aliases. Let me long form it here. Uh, there's our Docker container. Look at it. It's beautiful. Look at that sucker. Running for 18 seconds, named SQL01. Well, so let's go through a use case, right? So... I can tell you, we have a client who uh, oftentimes sends us a backup of their one of their production databases and says, hey, we've made some changes. We want you to refresh the uh, SQL database that you have and you're developing against to have our newest stuff. So what it'll do, it, what we'll, we keep their database in Azure. So they send us a backup. Well, normally you can just import a backup file to Azure, but you can't have custom security logins with that. And wouldn't you know it, this client has custom security logins because, you know, customer's going to customer. So let's go into that directory. I've got a folder here and I've actually got a backup, right? Uh, and I'm going to, let's see, we've got that container out there. Let's just do this. Let's talk about maybe, can we do it? So we've got our container running. That's what we that we, we we executed this to do it. Now let's talk about copying files in and out. So basically, this customer sent me a backup file, and I need to get that security login out so I can upload it to Azure. So we're going to run that command there with Docker copy, and we're going to copy in the, the first parameter is the source file. The second parameter is the destination file. And if you're going to use the you're going to use a container as one of the the source or the destination, you need to prefix it like. Uh, container name or ID colon the path. So SQL one is the name of that container I spun up. So let's run that same command. 
And I'm going to, in this sources data folder, I'm going to copy in that backup, client, going to client.back. And I'll come over here to my command line, copy up that to that container. And it just comes up. Now, one of the cool things I did in this, um, when we executed the command to start it up, I exposed the port that's up here, port 1433. I told it, hey, in that container, you have 1433. Map that to my local hosts, my, my host machines, 1433. So I can come into SQL and connect to that SQL server using the password. Look in here. There's no databases. It's, we just spun it up, right? There's no databases here. But I can come in and say, hey, restore a database. Because I copied that back into the container, I can now magically select it there. And that, that you'll notice the path, var op ms SQL data, that it no window path. Hit OK. Well, thank you. Open it up. Let's see. Now I know they've got, yep, Sean Hasselhoff. I knew they had a custom login in there. So I'm just going to remove him. I don't need it. I'm, I'm just want to get this. OK, so now I need to do a backup. Uh, backup. Yeah, yeah, default stuff. Yeah, just do it. Make it so, number one. Okay, disconnect from that. So now in that container, I've got a copy of a, a backup file in there that has that security login removed. So I'm just going to, let me see, let me copy that command in. It's basically the same copy command, but the parameters are back are, are swapped. So I'm gonna copy from the container out to my local machine. And here I've got a backup. As a matter of fact, if I go ahead and delete that to show that it did it, because, you know, don't want to be cheating here. There you go. There's that backup from the container that doesn't have that uh, uh, security login. So now I can go in there and have fun with it. So it's cool stuff. You can map uh, drives. Matter of fact, we can, um, let's see, let me come into the slides again. Let's slide on up in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a little late. Port forwarding and volume mapping. So we just showed you port forwarding because we added that uh, P1433, and that's mapping it from the host to the inside. We can also map a volume, basically mapping a drive, right? So in this case, I would be saying um, D sources data, which is a directory on my machine, map that into var op MS SQL data. That would be a great way to persist that data because once the containers are gone, let me get rid of that thing. SQL 1. D remove SQL 1. Goodbye to you. So now we don't have any containers. And I'm going to run the same command again to create a container. But this time I'm going to tell it, hey, map that D sources data, which is the folder we're in over here, to that directory inside the container, which is where uh, Microsoft SQL Server stores its data uh, in this container. So just hit that. It's going to execute. There, I got a container. It should be running. Uh, and then look over here in this folder. All of a sudden, my master database starts showing up, my model, my temp DB, all those files start showing up. So now I can log back into that again. Like a boss, I can come in here and create a new database. Uh, yo, this is cool. Hit OK. And I've got the database in SSMS just like normal, but I've also got the MDF and everything over here. So now when I disconnect from that, just get out of it. I'm going to come over here and say, you know, stop that container. As a matter of fact, heck, I hate it so bad. Just delete that container. It's no longer on my machine. I don't have SQL installed on my machine now. But because I mapped that drive, I've still got the database and the data that I can use other places. Yeah, it's the best table name ever. And yeah, I'm in chat, all up in your chat, reading your messages. Yeah, so so that's pretty cool. So we can do everyday tasks like that. But let's take it a step further. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Let's go into Visual Studio because, you know, developer gun develop. So in here, I've got a very simple app. It is so simple, in fact that it will amaze you. All I've got is a couple classes, you know, client class. What you gonna do? Uh, it's got a name created. We're gonna use some Entity Framework Core, right? Because that's how that's how we play here. Uh, and then I've got some things, you know, 
normally my connection stream is going to be some environment variable, super secret connection string. But uh, if I'm in debug, I'm going to tell it, hey, the server is called SQL Demo. The database is called OMG Data. And there's my username and password. Now, of course, that's just in debug, right? So there's just some stuff. We're gonna ha we have a method to seed the data if we need it. Uh, we got our model. This is all just EF core stuff. We're not gonna get into that, but trust me, it's amazing. Uh, and then we have one database migration that basically builds out the database with the clients and the uh, and the uh, address table. And then I've got this like web app, this .NET Core MVC or ASP.NET Core MVC app, and all it's doing is spinning up. And in that home controller, I get that. Uh, context from that thing, pull in the clients and return it to the index view. And the index view just basically does a, a TR, builds a table with the, the ID and the name. Now my C data method um, is running every time. In my startup, I've got it telling it, hey, OMG context, migrate that data, please, so that we have it. So then when I run it, nothing's going to happen. It's going to bomb because it's going to say that database doesn't exist except I have a Docker file here because of course I'm going to eventually deploy this ASP.NET Core app in a Docker container. So I've got a Docker Compose. And in that Docker Compose, I say spin up that, Docker, that SQL Docker web app uh, and call it SQL Docker web, you know, and then it depends on the SQL demo service, which is basically the SQL 2017. And we're going to call it SQL demo. And because it's in that Docker container, it's going to put those on the same network just amongst themselves. Uh, I've exposed the port here so that I can access it with SSMS if I wanted to. And then I've also mapped that drive so that uh, we can see the data later on. So that container was gone, so I can delete those files. And I'm going to debug this web app. And if all the demo gods have been Suffici sufficiently uh, appeased today, we should see a browser open up and magically it'll be just the default uh, ASP.NET website, except it should list uh, one client. So that seed database method basically seeds one client and one address. And right now it's starting up, it's compiling it all. It's going to spin up uh, an ASP.NET Core container and it's going to spin up a, a SQL server and there it is. Look at that. I've got one record with just the ID that's a GUID, the, the customer's name. And when I get done, I can close this thing down and stop debugging, get out of it all. I can go delete containers. Now, look at that. It created my OMG data database. So I've still got that that I can play with if I need to. I can access it. I could spin up that container and connect to it through SSMS if I wanted to. Uh, matter of fact, Heck, let's do it. Why not? Do it live. Let that thing start back up. We'll connect to that sucker like a boss. Let's see. We want to connect. and We're going to have to wait for it to finish loading. Okay, I got my web app up. So proof in the pudding. The web app is running. So the SQL server should be running. <gasps> OMG data. OMG data. There's my clients, my addresses. It's got the migration history because, you know, that's how we roll with EF core. Isn't that awesome? I've got my data there. I can sample it in SSMS. So if I'm debugging, I think there's something wrong with the data. I can still play with it. Uh, and then I can close it down. So this is like legit, just a database for me and my development environment. And when I'm done with it, I can say, get out of here, SQL, and you're not on my machine. Because I named it, I can just say, Docker, why don't you remove SQL demo and SQL Docker dot web because I'm done. Oh, I had to stop them. DCX SQL demo. I apologize for the DCX. That's a, an alias, which you can get from the dev toolbox PowerShell uh, extension. Uh, it's pretty cool. And it, it also works better if you type the names right. Just as, you know, Little, little helper there for you. If you type the name of the container right, it always removes it better. So now I'm done with Visual Studio. I'm done developing. But because I mapped that drive, I've still got my data there if I want to use it. Uh, or if I didn't map it, it could just go away too, which is wonderful. 
It makes everybody happy. If you're not happy with that, well, I don't know what to tell you. Call Mark Miller because that presentation was amazing. So with that, thanks everybody for listening to me talk about this. Uh, it's, it's always fun to hang out with all of you, my friends on Twitch and the interwebs. This is the Michael John. John. That's right, Bobby Johnson. Uh, you can find my slides, the, uh, the code that I use, some additional links to help you start doing this at that bit.ly link there. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Michael Jolly. Uh, I know it sounds weird, but you can also find me on the web at MichaelJolly.com. I know it's hard to remember. Uh, and then, of course, I'm streaming three days a week on Twitch. I'd love to see you there uh, and hang out with you. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, anybody got some questions? Yes. Yeah, so I've got answers. We've got some. Um, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Sweet. So there we go. Uh, so, yeah, we no, had a I'm couple so of questions that uh, people have been posting. People have been mostly having um, issues with. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Thank you for turning the camera on and off. That was perfect. That's how um, we do it in developer land. That's right. On and off. So um, with regards to hey, EF and whatever else. But the one that's here that I think it's going to drive some good conversation is yeah. uh, Molten. Um, uh, MC Backers asking, why wouldn't you use Docker and SQL Server in a production environment? Why is that an issue? Because, okay, so so see, think of Docker as like a, a service, right? A system mm -hmm. service that's running. If you have like a little process, web app, something very specific like that, perfect for that scenario. You wouldn't want to try, you know, think about like microservices really, right? But you wouldn't go put SAP in a container, it's just too much. Right. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna shoot yourself. To be honest, you're 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 not gonna last a year. You're gonna go drive yourself crazy. Same way with SQL Server. It's a little too big, and then you get into issues of scaling that. Right? Uh, for instance, like I showed you how to uh, mount a drive to like the host machine for the data, so that data persists. Well. That would be the only way you could do it because a container is transient. It goes away and comes back and come goes away and comes back. Well, if you don't mount that to a drive, the data is going to go away with the container. That is bad news if you're running in production. Right. But if you did mount it and you tried to scale that SQL instance, you're going to have issues because you can't mount all those containers pointing to that same data file uh, and and live. If things are going to go squirrely real quick when all those containers are trying to access the same uh, MDF. Yep. Uh, but it's perfect in these little small scenarios where you have just some tasks to run, uh, where I don't have to deal with like the full big install. I don't have to deal with uh, managing updates and all that kind of stuff and firewall settings to make sure I'm not being attacked. Uh, matter of fact, if you don't forward the ports to your host machine, uh, like I showed you, uh, it, there's no exposure at all. Awesome. It's only in, available in that little Docker network, which Perfect. is really cool. Perfect. Yeah, I was just uh, yeah. I was looking at the chat here, and uh, Molten Backer says like, "Good, cool, good to know. Thank you for answering my question." So that that was really great. Uh, good, good. You, uh, everybody loved. Yeah, don't do it. Everybody loved the presentation. You did an awesome job. I knew you. I knew you would based on our tech check uh, a couple of days ago. So thank you again, uh, Michael, for taking the time to um, chat with us and to share your knowledge and your passion. And Absolutely. Your, and your humor. <laughs> uh, humor what? with us. What? I, were you funny? What? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so we are going to, uh, for everybody watching the stream, we're going to get uh, Michael off the, uh, the Skype here and get um, Sweeky, uh, who is our next presenter. We're going to talk about mixed reality and Xamarin. Oh, that's so nice. So we are going to be doing that here. So we're going straight into the slate and going uh, mute for a little bit. We'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Adiós.